Now, with India's space agency ISRO opening up for private participation, Agnikul, a space tech startup incubated by IIT Madras Research Park, is all set to make smaller satellite launches easier and faster. Now, it's building its own rockets and making single piece 3D printed engines. The first launch is likely to be next month in October. My colleague, in, uh, Sam Daniel caught up with Agnikul's co-founder, Srinath Ravichandran. Here's what Srinath Ravichandran had to say. We come to you from a very interesting space tech startup at the IIT Madras Research Park. It's called Agnikul. They build rockets and in a few months' time, they plan to have their first launch. And joining us now, Mr. Srinath Ravichandran, the co-founder of uh, Agnikul. Thank you very much for your time. The specialty is they build rockets and they also print the engines, what they call as uh, single piece 3D printed engines. Thank you very much for your time and tell me about the story of Agnikul. Uh, hello sir, so I think uh, Agnikul started in 2017 when we actually identified a problem that you know small satellites are not able to go to space in time. So we wanted to build a solution wherein within two weeks anyone or any you know satellite can be put in space. So the products that we are building are meant to have rapid, you know, on-demand launch access as they speak. So this is the 3D printer and you print literally your engine here. Yeah, so one thing, that one technology that we use is what we call a 3D printing for our entire engine, right? So if you look at what is complex about a rocket engine, there are way too many parts, right? And because of the number of parts in the rocket engine, usually it's a very cumbersome process to put it together. Right. So, then comes the 3D printer here for example. What this one does is the entire rocket engine can be made like a single component. An example is say for example you take a screw, right? You think of it as a single component. You don't think of it like a bunch of parts that are assembled. Right. Similarly, we are able to think of an entire rocket engine as a single part. And that's what the team has done here. We uh, you know, have done it to a point where we even have a patent issued on this one. Amazing. Can you show us the engine? So what you see here are you know a couple of different versions of the engine that right. you can see here. Right. So the the interesting aspect here is that from the top, bottom here to the top, this is the right. ex the engine is inverted and kept because right. it's printed in this manner. Uh, the interesting part here is this whole thing is a single piece. Okay. So there is zero assembly, zero welding, zero brazing. None of the processes that are used for integrating metals. Nothing is in here. So that and is the specialty. When is your first launch and how much would your launch cost? So uh, our first launch we are targeting in October or November of this year. We are I think getting here. Already the vehicle has gone to the launch pad. Uh, we are doing the last bit of integration checks and some testing here at IID as well. Launch cost obviously I think it's going to be different over for our early launches versus the later launch. This one is going to be somewhere around half a million dollars or so to start with. I think the commercial launches which will be, this the first one is a tech demonstrator. The commercial launches will be slightly higher initially about a million dollars or so. And that would come down to as we start doing more. So, is it complementing ISRO or competing with ISRO now? <laughs> uh, very much complementing, right? Because if you look at it, our uh, largest vehicle capacity is at 300 kg or so. And that is actually the smallest that ISRO is building. So, there is a gap in the market today. If you look at, say, you're a customer and you want to come to India and launch, below 300 kgs there are no launch vehicles so we actually believe we are filling that gap in the country today. going to orbit for isro is not a big deal right they are obviously the masters there but can we take something from there and build something on top of it so that a particular class of customers are directly addressed and in that process we can also create some value for you know the space tech in the country and tell us about your growth story you began bootstrapping is it and how much have you raised so far your projections and we have raised around uh, 40 million dollars in uh, you know funding over four rounds of various you know funding rounds uh, and in that process i think we have put together you know good technology i think of it more like a library of technologies that can be assembled in a way to go to orbit right, right? that's how we do it i think today we are about uh, 250 people on an average uh, you know across four or five facilities including a private launch pad within Sri Harikota. And what's your long term dream now, now that you're all set to launch? So uh, we started Agnikul with this vision that you know getting to space shouldn't be the hardest part of doing something from space. Uh, in other words you could say that you know space transportation should be as easy as ground transportation because what we have come to see today is there are so many things that can be done from space but people are not able to tap into that because they are actually not able to go to space when they want, how easily right. they want, at the cost they want. 
So if we break that barrier, if it is not even a barrier, I think a lot of new things will come up. So that is our wish. Thank you so much for your time and all the best. That was Mr. Srinath Ravichandran, the co-founder of Agnikul. As they get ready for the launch and literally India's space tech startup taking wings and all set to soar high. At the IIT Madras Research Park in Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Findy TV.